season and we're now in the season of ascension tide. So why do you look upwards? Our Lord has been taken away into heaven. Look about you. What do you see? There are so many places where the love of God is needed so much more these days. Look beyond you. Look about you. Where will you go? Christ calls to go into the world to bring God's healing love to all. So uh, let's start our hymn, uh, our hymn singing with singing number 46, Most Glorious Lord, You Have Gone Up. <laughs> ascension from this realm to the heavenly kingdom. 
We stand in awe and wonder of what we hear and see. Open the eyes of our hearts to see the power and truth of your words. Give us courage and joy that we might be witnesses to your eternal love. Lord, we try to be Easter people, but more, more often we are what's going to happen next people. We want to know what we're supposed to do. We journeyed through Lent. We stood at the foot of the cross, witnessing Jesus' resurrection and his appearance to his disciples in the upper room after the day of resurrection. We encountered Jesus on the lake shore. And now today we're called to wait. Oh Lord, that's so hard for us to do. We want to jump into some sort of action straight away. So Lord, we need you to calm our hearts. We need you to help us to wait. To wait for the coming of the Spirit. So Lord, forgive our impatience and our lack of faith. Help us as we place our trust in your redeeming love. And so we say together, as we do week after week, day after day, the prayer that you taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Bible reading is just a short part of Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 6 to verse 11. Jesus is taken up into heaven. Listen. For God's word. When the apostles were all together, they asked Jesus, Lord, are you now going to give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, The Father is the only one who has the authority to decide dates and times. These things are not for you to know. But when the Spirit comes, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will receive power. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. After he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud hid him from their sight. As he was going, they were looking into the sky. Suddenly, Two men wearing white clothes stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, whom you saw taken up from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go. Amen, and thanks be to God for his sharing of his holy and life-giving word, and to him be all praise and glory. Let's sing number 443, He is Lord, He is Lord.
some of my colleagues who I met at the General Assembly were talking about what they were going to do for their talk or sermon for this morning. And someone suggested asc ascension deficit disorder. <laughs> but I get stuck with Easter people wait for the Holy Spirit's help. Only in Luke and Acts do you find mention of the Ascension. Luke, who wrote both books, provides us with the only biblical witness to the event, even though it is assumed in the other Gospels and in the writings of Paul. The Ascension then serves as the hinge that ties Luke and Acts together. It serves as a transition from the earthly works and teaching of Jesus to his heavenly work as intercessor and director of the mission of the church. The ascension also shows that Jesus is now king of the whole universe. Jesus as the one by whom God created the universe was already this, but now it is publicly displayed to the apostles who would have undergone, who would have to go undergo great dangers as they went about proclaiming that gospel. They had to be sure of the person of Jesus and that no matter what happened, that their eternal future was assured. And this would be a great strength and joy to the apostles and to all the other followers of Jesus. What I read to you reveals that Jesus gives some final instructions to the apostles. They are to return to Jerusalem and to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. They are first called to obedience to the gospel. There's something interesting in the text where we hear that most translators say that he summoned them together. But there is a different possibility if you just change one Greek letter and read it slightly differently. And the second meaning was that he, they, that they took salt together. And this means that Jesus had lunch with them, so to speak. Rather than summoning them, he dined with them. The meaning of the term is the similar to our use of breaking bread together, something that we will be doing as part of our communion service next Sunday. Feasting, as well as the importance of the idea of the heavenly banquet, which was what was included by Luke in the first communion service, serves as a reminder that Jesus said and will return. And this would strengthen the apostles for the difficult journey that they faced in the days and months and years to come. So during the course of this last earthly meal together, Jesus answered the question that came up whether this big event that Jesus was promising would happen would be the re-establishment of the earthly kingdom of Israel. As Jews, this had been their lifelong expectation that the Messiah, the Christ, would overthrow the age of the Gentiles who had oppressed the land of Israel and established a new kingdom like its greatness that had happened a thousand years previously under the time, at the time of King David. And Jesus answered in a way that didn't deny that the Holy Spirit was coming and that it would usher in the kingdom age. But what he did deny was that it would be the kingdom that they were really expecting. And in a way, the church, the whole church, is an earthly representation of the kingdom of God. Jesus, Jesus even said, the kingdom of God is amongst you. And he's saying that not just to one or the few of the apostles who were there, 
but to the wider whole church, not just to each individual believer. And this wasn't going to be the universal revelation of the kingdom that will occur at the time of Jesus' return, a time that only the Father knew, knew about. Instead, Jesus calls them to obey, to obey him. There are several statements of Jesus which would properly be called the Great Commission. And we heard the words of one of them. In the first verse, we're told that what we ought to do is to continue the ministry which Jesus began. And in verse 8, we're told the scope of what we're meant to do, the scope of our mission. It wasn't to be confined just to the land of Israel, or even to the Jewish people scattered throughout other parts of the Roman Empire. No, it was to go out to everyone, everywhere, starting in Jerusalem. The word had to go as far as it could to the four corners of the world, to the uttermost of the realms of time, until the time of the return of Jesus. And we can pick up, pick up from this passage that the Church of Jesus' day was to continue to teach what Jesus had taught and to do what Jesus had did, except that the Church cannot and does not atone for sin. That alone is the proper work. Jesus. The church is called to share in the common suffering with Christ in anticipation of the kingdom. We, as part of the church today, can be seen as episode three in what it was that Jesus began to do and to teach. This is indeed true to the extent that we are to remain faithful to proclaim the same gospel that the apostles did. Even though the great age of miracles have for the most part passed, a time when God used to establish the church and the canon of scripture is closed and it will no more will be added to God's word. But we are still to remain faithful, faithful even unto death. God is still at work in his church because God promised that God would be with us until the end of this age. And what seems to be clear from the passage is that the God who works through us by the power of the Holy Spirit that's why the church was to wait. It was Christ's church, and as head of the church, things were to be carried out according to Christ's way. Obedience to the gospel is its first requirement and its first fruit. It is not our job to be inventors or innovators we are called to be followers. Our task is either to plant, as in to evangelize, or to water, as in to nurture our brothers and sisters in Christ. It is God who makes for the growth, for the increase. We rely on God and we must rely on God to do God's part, while we as faithful servants do what God has called us to do. That's what we've been trying to discover it is to me to be Easter people. Next Sunday, we move on to the celebration of Pentecost, the church's birthday the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that is when we are reminded that the Holy Spirit is here 
to support us in truly becoming Easter people. And Jesus Christ will nurture us, will feed us, will refresh us as we join together in sharing the elements of bread and wine as we celebrate Mint Sunday, the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Last Monday, the moderator, the Right Reverend Ian Greenshield, who will be here in a couple of weeks' time, standing in this very place, said as the opening remarks for before the celebration of Holy Communion at the General Assembly was, a table spoke to me. And he said, before you send for the white men with the straitjackets and drag me away, the table that spoke to me is Christ's table, the communion table, the table that we gather around Sunday by Sunday, the table that quarterly is the focus of our sharing in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. So it's not just the table that declares the wonder of our Lord God, it is all heaven that declares it. Let's sing that hymn. <laughs> Sunday, as I've mentioned already, is our Pentecost communion. And following that, two weeks from now, is Trinity Sunday, where we gather here in church in the morning and in the afternoon. I would invite as many of you as are able to come along for a service at half past two to celebrate the centenary last year during COVID lockdown times of the 8th Falkirk Boys Brigade. And our special guest preacher will be the Right Reverend Ian Greenshield, who is a minister from Dunfermline, from the city of Dunfermline, but we won't hold that against him. And he is just coming to join with us. And as I said in Facebook, some of you may have noticed that he's putting that ticket in between travelling along with the Archbishop of Canterbury and Pope Francis to South Sudan. So let's make sure that Paisley doesn't feel like South Sudan to him and be full of bickering and warfare. And also that he is in good company with us, as good as Mr. Welby and Francis, Pope Francis. So that's our event coming. Next Sunday, we're going to re-establish something, something we haven't done for two weeks, uh, two years. We're going to have a cuppa available after the service. 
It's going to be, we don't have to worry about struggling down those stairs to get into the church hall. We're going to do it in a comfy zone here, and if there's more of you, we can go through into the session house, and so we will have a cuppa after the service. Unfortunately, no scones, no beautiful home baking. It has to be wrapped biscuits still just to ensure that everyone stays safe. So please do come prepared to stay a little bit longer. I'll try and make the services about as short as this one perhaps. Cut the sermons down so you just get a short message that you might remember some more of. But that will be from next Sunday on. We will have a cuppa. And that will also mean that on the 12th, when we have a wee somewhat bigger cuppa, and the afternoon will be gotten used to what we're going to be doing. So hope to see you and hope you can see you to be able to stay a little bit longer. The summer newsletters are available. If you've not got your own copy here, see your district elder or distributor so that they don't have to come to your door. And um, again, this is something we've not had for the last two years. It's a wee bit smaller because I've not been able to get into the primary school to be able to do printing. Great, great big thank you to Morai who struggled through COVID and then managed to come up with a newsletter just because of that, a little bit later than we'd have liked. So if you've got your magazines to distribute, you're going to have to do them this week, please, so that folk know about the communion service. And, uh, but in particular, big thank you to Morai for collating everything putting things together, and to our band of trusty helpers, including Bill and Paul and Elaine, who printed it on the BB printer and left it there for more out to sit and go staple. That's one of the great things about doing it in the school. The machine does it for us and collates it as well. So we have a summer newsletter, the autumn one, by then hopefully I'll get back into Bainsford Primary School and we'll be able to print it and it might be bigger and whatever. But it won't have a colour cover like we've got this one. That would cost us far too much. Please remember the food pocket food bank and the uh, Langley's food pantry. Please remember folk who are not here, pick up the phone, find out what's wrong, or just have a wee chat. It's not about finding out what's wrong, actually. It's about saying the church is still here for you, even if you haven't been able to get to the church for whatever reason. And those, I think, are all the new notices to bring to your attention, unless anybody else has anything to say. No special birthdays or anything? No. Okay. Right, let us... Come to God again with prayer. What's the special word that we've heard today as being our call as members of the church? It's wait. And that can be hard for us, can't it? We want to get out and do something right now. We want to serve. We're itching to move and to be about your work. As Easter people, we're ready, willing, and think that we're able. And yet you call on us to wait. To wait until the Spirit is given to us. Sometimes we are fearful of waiting. Because sometimes it means losing our enthusiasm. So Lord, we ask you to give us courage and strength to prepare our spirits for your service. Help us to know that with us, that you are with us always, opening our hearts and minds to your work and your will for us. But Lord, some of us will say, what on earth do you want us to do? I'm weary. I've done so much when I was younger. I wish I could do the same again. But it's a different world. Well, we have work still to do. We have work to do, even, or perhaps most importantly, 
that we pray for those younger, fitter, more agile, more enthusiastic, to get on and do your work. And we pray, Lord, fervently, deliberately, for all those who organise things like putting posters on trains to say, try praying. The people who organise events like the Renew Wellbeing events that our local, our friends and brothers and sisters in Falkirk Baptist Church are doing in our church, our church parish in the community hall. We pray for all the other churches of all denominations working, working for you. We pray for ourselves that what little we feel we're able to do may be blessed, may be encouraged, may be magnified by the work of others. And that Lord, Lord, we know starts with prayer. Prayer committing what we're doing to be your way, not our way. Prayer for the people that we meet, that even though we don't know what their difficulties are, that we pray silently, imperceptibly, for their strength, for their healing, for their needs to be met through your grace. So Lord, as we go about our daily times, our daily work, our daily going wherever, help us to trust in everything that Jesus said. For the time is coming when our witness will be crucial, when our words and actions will reveal your love and your healing power to someone, someone who needs to know your love and your healing power. So make us ready, Lord. Make us ready to be your agents. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. Thank mm -hmm.
Prepare our hearts and spirits to receive power from on high. To go into God's world in confidence, offering heal, healing and hope to all you meet. Go in peace and may God's peace be with you and all whom you encounter today, tomorrow and forever.